Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. It's your boy Chapu from Chaps for Jesus. As you can see, I have two workhorses working here in the background. My Saval SVO1 and my Saval SVO1. Say hello. Well, a lot of you are probably curious as to how to update this to Marlin 2.0 and curious on some of the features. Being a newbie, I can only mention one that I noticed yesterday that I actually liked very much, which made me want to go ahead and share it with you guys. All right, this machine is running uh, Marlin 1.6.1, .1, and this one's running Marlin 2.0. When I stop a print, You'll notice this one moves away from the print, but it remains at a height safe from it hitting any print. On this one, let's say I want to move it away from the print because this is Peggy. I don't want it to cool too quickly. And I don't want it to get stuck on the nozzle. It completely auto homes and it lowers. So if you have a large print that's been going on for a few hours, you're gonna run the risk that the machine is gonna to try to lodge itself into that print. On Marlin 2.0, it'll move away from your print, which will allow you to remove the print, but safe enough that it won't run into your print. I said that word a lot, right? Huh. Well, let's see if we can do it. On this machine, I'm gonna show you guys, and I want you to forgive me for the Blair Witch effect, but I just wanna show you what each machine has. So on this machine here, we're going to go into about printer and it's 1.1.6.0. Let me see if I can clean the camera folks. One point one point six point zero, and on this machine. So how do we do it? I originally did not want to upgrade my 1.6 machine so I'm not but what I am going to do is reinstall it on the one that has the 2.0 because it's the exact same feature actually the exact same steps so what do you need? Right now, uh, Ultimaker has made Cura 4.7, which has all the recognition codes for the SVO1 and the SVO2 by Saval. So I didn't have to change anything. On uh, Cura 4.6.2, you're gonna have to go into settings, uh, preferences, go into the machine settings, enable datacom port three, and the communications data connection at 115,200 kilobits per second. On Cura 4.7, I didn't have to do any of that because it was already pre-configured for the Savals. Now, for those of you who are running the Creality 1.2.2 software and you have uh, Windows 10, I'm sorry to say, or even Windows 8, I'm sorry to say, it will not recognize the machine. It'll slice for you, it'll get the STL files going for you, but it will not recognize the physical hardware. You're going to have to have Ultimaker Curus 4.7. So being that I already have that, I'm going to launch Ultimaker uh, Cura 4.7. I'm going to turn the machine off. Go ahead and plug in your USB 2.0 B plug male into the female connection on the machine. 
it will turn on the LCD screen. It's not turning on the machine, it will not run it. It's not enough to heat up the hot end, the hotbed, fans, and so forth. Only to load up the firmware so that Ultimaker Cura could see it. But it doesn't stop there. Once the firmware is completely loaded and you see all the data, go ahead and turn the machine on. The USB power is enough just to basically show you the command or the, uh, the home screen to the SV01. Powering it on allows it to basically overwrite uh, the software. So, what's the next step? We have Ultimaker Cure 4.7, but we also have to go to the Saval website and download the software. So where do you go? On the Saval's website, you're going to see at the top where it says support. Go to support. We're not going to track an order. We're not going to go to the help center. We're going to go to document download. We're going to scroll all the way down to where it says Marlin 2.0, but without the BL Touch. I do not have a BL Touch on my machines. If you're not familiar with the Google Doc screen, on the top right, you're gonna see this little icon here. That stands for download, click on that. Being that I already downloaded it, I'm not gonna download it again. It's gonna ask me if I wanna save it as, and that's where I would tell it in what folder I want it to go to so I have something on my desktop specifically for my Saval. And that's where I saved it, right here. Marlin 2.0.0. Now, I go to my desktop where I have it saved. Click on it. Don't double click on it. Single click on it. You want to tell the operating system which folder you want to extract. And that's the Marlin 2.0 because it's a zip file. I use 7-zip. It's free. You can use WinRAR or in this case Windows recognizes it and it will be able to extract it. But I love 7-zip so that's what I use. I hit extract here. It's already here. Here is my extracted folder so there's an extracted folder then there's a subfolder they're both labeled the same boom there's my hex file all right so being that I know it's there I know it's extracted now I'm gonna go to ultimate Kakura go to manage printers go to update firmware Being that it is not an Ultimaker machine, I have to tell it to upload it. It's not gonna automatically do it. Click on upload. Again, I have to look for my specific folder where I saved it. Saval, Marlin, Marlin again, because remember, it was an, a decompressed folder and then a subfolder that had the same name. And there it is. Saval so SVO1 Marlin 2.0 Hex. Click on it. Right now it's updating. I'm going to move you folks to the machine and enough of an angle so you can see what the laptop is doing as well. Sorry. Let me get that back in the frame. The metal spatula caused my uh, my laptop to freeze somehow. I'll share it again. So, manage printers, update firmware. Oh man, it caused it to glitch. Go figure. Shut the machine off, unplug it, 
let it go down, plug it back in. You have to wait for the firmware to load before you turn the machine on. If you turn the machine on, it just causes it to glitch. The operating system won't recognize it. There it is. Load it back up. Close. Update firmware. Doesn't see it. Hang on. Not the machine's fault. It's the metal spatula. Upload custom firmware. Desktop where I had it. So vault folder where I had it. Marlin 2.0. Decompressed. Subfolder. Hex file. Now it's uploading. And now there is no metal spatula to cause me to glitch. L to the O to the L. There's the machine. And there's the software being updated in the background. I absolutely love these machines. They're direct drive. Stellar customer support, stellar, friendly, courteous, lovable. I mean, look at this. When you get prints like that and they make you look like you know what you're doing, who's going to argue? All right, so the firmware has completed. See it on my big screen, it says complete, and I can go ahead and hit close. So I am. Close, close, close. Go ahead and shut the machine off. Unplug it from your computer. And here we're gonna go ahead and see if I can avoid the glare as much as possible. Turn the machine back on. Remember, it's unplugged. Let me go ahead and go under the machine. About printer. Printer info. There it is. Marlin 2.0. But wait a minute. Chapel, you already had 2.0 on that. Ah, you know what? Fine. Let's do it to this machine. And how do we do it again, folks? Remember, the machine has to be off. So while the machine is off and I have this 988 mile long wire and I'll even take the SD card out so you guys don't think I'm trying to do any tricks. SD card is out. Machine is obviously off. Plug it in. Remember the computer sees the machine but the machine firmware has to load first. Let's see if I can get the logo there. some counter light out of here there all right so that works let me see if I can get my tripod to do it got it thank you for your patience folks Someday I'll probably have all the equipment I need to do all this fancy stuff. But I want to show you that anybody at any time with a willing heart can do it. So again, the machine is off. All this is running off the USB power on my laptop. So right there shows Marlin 1.6. 1.1.6. I keep seeing that wrong, folks. I'm sorry. So now I'm going to go ahead and power the machine on. 
See, it went ahead and switched. So while that's doing that, see, wire connected to my laptop. I'm gonna go ahead again, go into manage printers, update firmware. Upload custom, desktop. Remember, I put it in my Saval folder. We have a decompressed folder. We have a subfolder. There's my hex file. It's updating. Same machine, nothing's changed. Software is running, shows updating. All right, folks, while this is going, I want you guys to think of positive things we could all be doing out there to make this world a lot better. I don't want you guys to slam me. Come on, I mean, let's be realistic. We could be going out there, 3D printing things for the homeless, for the needy. Uh, we could be 3D printing things for children in hospitals, our loved ones. You never know. I got my mom addicted to this. She wonders what's the next Benchy or Little Groot or Green Lantern or Dead Tree that I'm going to send to her. Come on. Let's keep the love going. So right here, my machine rebooted. And remember, before it was 1.1.6. Printer info. Voila! There you go, my friend. S'il vous plaît, chez toi, c'était le 3D print. is for everyone. If I can do, you can do too. Listen, I say this all the time and I really don't care how much of a broken record I sound. Alright? If I can do it, you can do it. All you have to do is take your time. Read. Ask questions before you buy any printer. Join the group. Ask a billion questions. Familiarize yourself with it. Ask a billion more questions, and if you feel comfortable, get the machine. Can you do certain upgrades? Yes. Are certain upgrades very difficult? Yeah. Not everyone can do it. But don't give up. I didn't. Again, I have autism, OCD, and ADHD. So I'm a whole bag of chips with the dip. Jesus got me with this grip. Listen, you can do it. I believe in you. And remember, at Chaps for Jesus, there's only one love. God bless, guys. Enjoy. 1.1.6 to 2.0.